In today's video, I'm doing some Texas style barbecue at home on a pellet smoker. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now this Texas style barbecue was epic. And it might seem a little simple when all you're adding is some salt and pepper for the rub, but when you add that post oak smoky flavor, you're gonna have some of the best barbecue in the world. So grab a couple chunks of post oak and some SP minus the G, Ron. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. It's the night before Christmas Eve and I've got a bunch of trimming to do because we're gonna have a Texas style barbecue tomorrow on Christmas Eve. And it's not just my family, you know Jake. I'm cooking some of this for him too. We got four racks of beef ribs, we've got two prime briskets, and we're gonna finish up this barbecue with a little bit of pulled pork. And this certainly is gonna be some really good fixings to celebrate this holiday season. Now when I got a lot of meat to trim up, I always mare, mare. Now when I got a lot of trimming to do, I always wear a cut resistant glove because you kinda get sleepy after a while. And this thing will help you stop any of those boo-boos. Now I'm not gonna bore you with all the trimming, but we have a three bone and we have a four bone. So we'll just start off with this three bone and we're gonna wanna get this fat off and some of this silver skin. Make sure that you have a very sharp knife anytime you're gonna do some trimming on some beef or pork or chicken. So we're just gonna start slipping our knife in and you're gonna wanna to keep it all the way to the top the best that you can and do your best to get as much of the silver skin off and not the meat itself. Obviously you always want to make sure you're cutting away from yourself just a little safer even if you have your cut resistant glove on. So our three bone that's pretty good we got a lot of surface area to go ahead and put some rub on it now when you get into the four bone there's a lot more fat on it and there's a vein in here that you're going to want to make sure that you're not cutting it all the way down or you're going to split this rack in half. This one same thing we'll just start cutting off some fat. One thing you can always do is just look on the sides. That will give you kind of a little bit of a reference point where this fat is on top of the meat. And this is where that fat seam is. And this is where you're gonna just wanna cut it down a little bit. So we're gonna call this pretty good on this four bone. This one had an excessively deep fat pocket. It's time to go ahead and start trimming up the brisket. On both of these, I'm gonna live, ugh, live. I'm gonna leave just a little bit more fat on them. I'm not gonna get as fussy, especially on the fat cap side. Just start slicing it off and we wanna bring it down to that good quarter inch if we can. And I always go ahead and start squaring it off on the back side a little bit, but this big deco fat right here, we're gonna wanna get off. Now here I like to go ahead and just try to get a little, little bit more of this fat out of here because this isn't gonna render. Once I trim this out, you can go ahead and just lay that point down and it gets more aerodynamic. And you especially wanna do that if you're cooking brisket in an offset. You want it as aerodynamic as possible. The one thing about a brisket, you can sit and trim forever, but this is good enough for the fat cap side. Let's go ahead and check out the flat. This big hunk of fat here, you want out for sure. It's almost like a bar of soap. It ain't gonna render. Now I didn't notice this in the cryovac when I bought it. Must have been a Monday at the slaughterhouse. Now on this part here that's holding the point to the flat, I'm not gonna get too crazy on it because if I do, this is gonna really roll out. I wanna leave it as this big knob at the end. We do wanna kinda round it off a little bit. Cutting this brisket with this shun is like cutting butter though. And we're gonna wanna kinda round this edge. Now it wouldn't be fair if I didn't give credit to my good friend Darren from Ash Kick and Barbecue. He's the one that told me, just take your knife on a little bit of a 45 and trim it right off. Helps that smoke roll. All right, so I'm gonna call this one good enough. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim up these pork butts. I'm not gonna do a lot to them and I'm actually leaving the fat caps on them. I always use the fat caps on a pork butt for a heat barrier. And on this side, I just wanna get some of this silver skin off and some of this fat because this we want to make sure we get a good bark on and on the money muscle we'll just trim off a little bit but that's the best part of the meat so be careful just lop off a little bit 
this here. And the same thing over by the money muscle. Let's just trim a little bit of that fat off. All right, so that's easily good enough for some pulled pork. Tonight, all I'm doing is salt brining all this protein. So we'll just start sprinkling a little bit on. We don't have to cover it up too much. And now I'm just gonna put all this meat on some wire racks and put them back in the fridge. Same thing with this one. We'll get her covered up. And overnight, this salt's gonna work its magic. It's gonna go deep into that meat. And that's gonna distribute a good salty flavor through every single bite. And we'll do the same thing on this brisket. Just a good even shake across it is all you really have to do. Get it in the pocket a little bit. That's a bonus. Flip it over and this side, we wanna get it on here for sure. And we'll get this one on another cooling rack. Start with the fat cap side on the pork butt and get the money muscle covered up a little bit. And we'll have room for both of them right on that wire rack. Tomorrow I'll bring you back and we'll coat all this protein up with some good old fashioned coarse ground black pepper. It's five o'clock in the morning and it's time to get the smoke rolling. Now this meat salt brine for 12 hours. If I had more time, I would have done it, but we only had, oh, I can't, I got I'm so tired. Now all these hunks of meat salt brine for 12 hours, but now it's time to get on the black pepper. In the binder for the pepper today, we're gonna use a little Worcester. Warheister, Warhooster, Wooster, Horsey sauce, Scheiser, the Hosen, whatever you wanna call it. But we're gonna get a little bit of this on, not much, just kind of rub it in. Get a little bit on the back side. Now we'll come over with our black pepper. We're going Texas style. Unfortunately, I do not have any 16 mesh around here that's easy available for me. So, gotta use what you can get your hands on. Now you can go as heavy as you want to, but I'm trying to do about a three to one ratio. So three black pepper, one part salt. Same thing, let's do up the beef ribs, get them coated up. I'm not gonna worry about putting a binder on the membrane though. Let's get some pepper on it and we're just gonna tap this in just a little and the same thing let's get these briskets all coated get the fat cap first get your edges the best that you can I am going pretty heavy with the black pepper but this meat can handle it all right we got our black pepper on all this protein now it's time to get this smoke daddy pellet pro fired up now we're doing a Texas style barbecue so we're using oak pellets from Lumberjack. In my area, I can't find any post oak pellets, but I am gonna throw some chunks of post oak in my Heavy D. And for you that are asking what's a Heavy D, it's this heat deflector. There's two ends, you go ahead and just put some chunks of wood in it, and then it just sits right above the fire pot. And I'm topping this off with just a little bit more of my oak pellets. And one big thing that I love about Lumberjack, their pellets are the smallest on the market. They're 5.5 milliliters. In my opinion, because they're smaller, you have more consistent heat, and they're much more efficient in that fire pot. We'll open up the pellet pro and get our heavy D in. And we'll just put it right here. Put one grate right at the bottom just to start it off. Turn the power on. So power, we're gonna hit medium, and we're gonna drop this down to 250 today. Open up the door and let all that white smoke get out of the chamber. Whenever you start up a pellet grill, you wanna make sure that your lid or your door is open. Gases can build up and it can get combustible, but also you don't want any of that garbage white smoke touching your food. And once it starts burning clean, I'll close up the door and then we're gonna preheat this to that 250 degrees. I'll bring you back when it's time to go ahead and load up this protein. The 2300 has come up to our 250 degree temp. Let's go ahead and start loading this thing up. Start with the pork butt on the bottom shelf. Get the this one right here, and then I'm gonna put this one right here. Put our first probe in, the pork butt, and I'm just gonna go right through this money muscle and get it in here a ways, just so we got something to monitor. Slide this grate in, start putting in the beef ribs. Get this one right here, this one right here, and the big rack on the outside. And my eyes are starting to water up, but we'll go ahead and get this rack right here for our brisket. We're gonna get the bigger brisket on first, but I always like to go ahead and put a little chunk of wood underneath that right about here. And I like to just kind of get this domed up right in the center 
so it doesn't start pooling up on top of that brisket. And we'll do the same for this last one, and the Heavy D is really kicking in right now. This one in just like that. The other probe put through here, and this one we're gonna go into the thicker part of the flat, go kinda right about here for right now. I'm just trying to get some type of temp but we'll go ahead and adjust those later. And if you can't tell already, this Heavy D is really smoking up. But in about a half an hour, this is gonna start to clear up and it will be burning nice and clean again. That post oak has just started to burn in that Heavy D. So I'll bring you back when the smoke all clears. And I might even add a water pan to this vertical, but most likely I'm just gonna end up spritzing up that protein. All right, we're creeping up on four hours on this cook and my pork butt is at 148 degrees and my brisket is at 138. Let's Let's go ahead and open up the Pellet Pro and check out this protein. Now it's still a little smoky in here, but hey, that's what that Heavy D is going to do to you. And when you add that post oak, oh yeah, you're going to get a smoky flavor for sure. But we certainly are developing a good bark on this stuff. I mean, that's looking serious if you ask me. Lots of moisture. We're getting some pretty big pullback on these bones. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate these for sure. Now these dino bones on this one, there's not a lot of meat there, but oh well. This one's starting to break on us already. Get this one back here. Let's check out our pork butt. Oh yeah, that's some really solid bark on that too. There is a ton of moisture in this pork butt, so we don't have to spritz anything in this cook today. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate these briskets around. We're gonna just try to hold our little wood chunk underneath there and rotate this one around also. And here's one thing I wanna point out to it. Take some of your butcher paper and put it on the ground to catch some of that grease. I have a mat also but you don't want to have to clean all that mess up. This is a good catch. I'll bring you back when I get ready to start wrapping up some of this protein, but I'll probably skip the actual wrapping of the beef ribs. I'm incredibly impressed how this Pellet Pro is doing with all this protein in it. I'm pushing six hours onto this cook, and we already wrapped up the beef ribs, but the pork is reading at 185 degrees internal. Let's go ahead and get them off. We're gonna throw them in a foil pan and get them back in the cooker. Obviously, we've got some awesome bark developed. We're gonna pull this out for right now, and we'll go ahead and get our pork butt off. Put her right in here, the first one. Get our second one off. This got a little crispy, but I think it's still good. I'm gonna take this bottom rack out, and I'm gonna slide it right up in the top rack. Pull off a piece of aluminum foil, and we're just gonna cover it up. Just gonna put these right up on top, and we'll just kind of find a good spot. Now, we're guessing, but We'll go right about here. And I'm gonna reroute one of my probes for the brisket itself. But we're certainly getting some really good bark on these two. And we'll probably go right about there with the probe for us right now. The Heavy D got all of this protein hopping right out of the gate, so we got a great jump start. Beef ribs, I'm gonna check their internal temperatures in about a half an hour, but I plan to pull them once they hit 225. 225. 225 degrees. God. I'm planning on pulling them once they hit 205 degrees. Bring you back once I start wrapping up those briskets. I'm eight and a half hours into this cook and the briskets have reached 162 degrees internal. We're gonna go ahead and get them wrapped up. Open up the door. Woo, we got some smoke again. Perfect timing for my eyes. Pull out these briskets and take a look. Heck yeah, that is some serious bark going on there right now. I don't need my wood chunk anymore, but you can see this is kind of domed up nice. This certainly helps. It's a good hack. That is some serious bark for sure. Get this one out and get rid of the wood chunk. Spray it down a little bit. You want to get it wet. Go right about here. Get it folded over. And we want to get it kind of tight into here. Then just take your corners. And we'll fold them over. You want to get everything tight. Then just crease them off a little bit, and then we're just going to start rolling it over. Same thing, get it tight. Now just try to find the thickest part of the flat. And when you're going into butcher paper, it's a little tougher, but that should work right about there. And now I'm going to turn on the circulating fan on the Pellet Pro, and we're also going to turn it up to 275 degrees so we can finish off this cook. You just go ahead and start hitting the plus sign. I'm running right on schedule and I'm not on a big rush, but it's always nice to finish just a little bit ahead. I got 10 hours into this cook. The pork butt was done about a half an hour ago. 
I pulled it off and put it in the cambro so it can rest for a couple hours. My guess these beefers are done. Let's go ahead and pull one out and see how tender it is. We'll grab this first one off and we'll just go ahead and check it out. Now this is some serious black gold Texas tea. Oh yeah, there's no resistance at all on this. I'm just gonna wrap it up and we're gonna put these all in the foil pan so they can rest. And this brisket is running at 199 degrees right now. The smaller one, eh, it's probably right in that same ballpark, but we're gonna give this at least another half an hour and then I'm gonna come out and check and see if they're probe tender. But this Smoke Daddy vertical, it's on the honor roll right now. It's looking good. Now it's been 20 minutes and my signals are saying that this brisket is at 205. Well, I'm gonna guess that the other one is pretty dang close, but let's go ahead and check out and see how tender it is. Like always, open up the door, right? Yeah. And I'll just get the probe out of it. This one's Jake's, he's excited. All right, well, we got a lot of steam coming off from it, that's for sure. I'm rolling her, lots of moisture in this pack. That makes me excited. Oh boy, look at that. That's looking good. Running at 204 in the flat. This is like crazy butter. Calling this one done. Just get it wrapped back up tight again as best we can and get her into Cambro. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out this other one and then I'll see you by the cutting board when we're ready to do a taste test. Now the pork butt is rested for about two and a half hours. The beef ribs about two and the briskets rested for an hour and a half. I can't wait any longer and everybody's hungry, so we're gonna start pulling the pork first. We're gonna start by just pulling out this bone to see what we got. Yeah, it's not bad. Little bit of stick because I didn't pull it right, but it's still really tender and juicy. Now when I pull pork, I just use my hands and I just start breaking it up. But oh yeah, I can hear it when I'm squeezing into it. Yeah, listen, oh yeah. It's just juicy, really juicy. This is certainly gonna have some awesome color. So when you're pulling pork, it's pretty simple. It doesn't take long at all. You can see this only took me about a minute. Now we're gonna start with this little chunk of bark because I really wanna taste that black pepper. Oh yeah. We got a little black pepper bite there. It's really good. It's got that Texas flavor with the salt and the pepper. And it's a little heavier on the pepper, but if you've watched my videos before, you know, I like black pepper. Now that's pure smoke right here. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna slice up them beefers. And again, we've got a four bone and we got a three bone. But we'll go ahead and cut off this short rib first. Well, I can tell you this, we got one heck of a smoke ring. Wow. Now we might as well just go ahead and lop off a little chunk. Very tender. Look at this bark. Wow. And the smoke ring. But we'll try this little piece right here. Again, I can taste the black pepper and doing a salt brine, it's money. And that Heavy D did an awesome job by adding a little layer of that post oak to it. Uh-huh, and the bark is perfect. Not too stiff and not too moist. And if you haven't tried butcher paper, what are you waiting for? Now it's time to check out that brisket. Obviously, this isn't the biggest brisket I've ever done before, but for tonight, this size is perfect because we wanted to have three different proteins for this Christmas Eve. We don't like to have a lot of leftovers. We got leftovers all the time. Now, obviously, my grain is running this way, so I'm just gonna cut, yeah, right about here. That'll be good. And let's see what we got. Oh yeah, nice little smoke ring. Go ahead and get a couple slices made. We'll cut one more off. Oh, heck yeah. Lots of moisture. Not the perfect brisket for a video, but it's cooked well. Mm. Now when I was trimming this up, I cut a bunch of the flat off because it was about that thick. <laughs> so, just gonna burn up anyways. This turned out real good. Now the part that we all love the most. Just cut this point open. Same thing. Looks decent, but it certainly has a lot of moisture. You can see it coming right through the bark. You know, if you look at this, it looks like a couple lips gonna give you a kiss. Here's the point. <laughs> Super tender, juicy, great flavor. Now the Smoke Daddy did an incredible job. 
very happy with it. You know, I had a decent amount of food in that pit and it handled it and it ran it well. Now, everything that I use in this video will be in the description below. So make sure you go over there and check it out. Especially if you're looking for a knife, I used three top brands in this video. I hope all of you have a great and wonderful holiday season. And thank you for being a subscriber to Dead Broke Barbecue. And also, have a great Happy New Year's. I think we're all ready for 2021. Oh, don't worry, I'll still have room for pecan pie. That's Christmas. I mean, come on. I am still full from this incredible Texas style barbecue cook. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. And to all of you new subscribers, thank you so much for joining the Dead Broke Barbecue family. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. Did it go away? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just take out that little one too, and then the next time you see me, it'll be on the cutting board. God, my eyes.